Everything I do gonna be funky. Good morning, I'm your host, Soraya Oliveira, and today I'm here with... How's was your? Jordan. Justin. And our special guest, Duda Penciado, the archivist. And now let's take you behind the scenes. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well this evening. Hello, Duda. We would like to welcome you to our show, Behind the Teens. So, Duda, we know that you are an artist who originated from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and have been doing art for about 30 years. You have also been a part of galleries, museums, community art projects, and global art. Correct? Yes. <laughs> First of all, I want to say I'm so proud to be here in this podcast with you, Soraya, and your peers, my granddaughter, my first granddaughter, you know? <laughs> this is super cool, I wanna say that. Thank you. And so what do you wanna know about? Well, our first question is, we would like to know where your first um, spark, your love for art came from? Like your spark for love. I mean, your spark for uh, art, sorry. Um, I think um, when I was a kid, I loved mm -hmm. visual things, and I remember a teacher, uh, I was very young. I was doing a sculpture with clay, and the teacher called my mom and saw that was a super cool piece, mm -hmm. and I won a prize. I just had this in my memory, but I, I think anyone who wants to be in an art field has a natural instinct mm -hmm. uh, for it, uh, but mm -hmm. then it's all about how you nurture, and my parents really nurtured that. He took me and my brothers to museums, theater, movies, where we talk this just talk about culture and, and art it was just every day in our home. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess it was a natural thing. Then later on, when I got older and when I tried a professional um, a route and become a professional artist, then I had real tensions with my mother. <laughs> She's like, wow, you're going to be an artist. This is crazy. You're going to make no money, you know, all those tensions. But, um, you know, I, I think at least art is, is an important connection to the human experience. We can be humans and love each other. You mentioned this is love by mistake, but mm -hmm. you can love people without understanding the power of arts and communication. And just to say that, where does I start? Like, why those guys are making paintings in the caves? That's incredible if you see those artworks. And right there... The humans, at a moment, they were doing the best in science and leaving uh, standards the way they could do. Uh, they were they were taking time to make art. So to me, art is the most powerful spiritual experience that connects we all. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So um, so that's when you decided to take it seriously. Was it was it your mother who was like your extra push to take this serious? No, I I didn't say it was natural to me. Mm -hmm. I was just love it, and I remember my mother was set up like like tables in a house with crayons and paint and stuff, and we all get together. I have three uh, two sisters and one brother. We're all in this table working, and my brothers and my sisters would leave the table. We stay for hours. And my mother saw that uh, that was something uh, very important to me, mm -hmm. but it was very instinctively first, you know, the way I, I, I nurtured this. I just love art, you know, and I just don't understand the world about art. Think about the world, there's no music. Think about the world, there's no color. How, how would, would you live in this world? So it's there, it's, it's almost in our DNA, it's, 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 it's coded in the human experience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so since you were born in Brazil, how difficult was it to learn English? Because I know the first language over there is Portuguese. Correct. It was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> in Brazil, in Brazil, we um, we loved <laughs> Brazil is a, is a country of music as well, and 
there's a lot of music going on. And when I was older, uh, in my 1918, Rock in Rio will come to Rio de Janeiro and you'll come to my city, Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in South America. It's a huge city, the size of New York. There's 11 million people just in the capital. It's, it's a huge operation. And I used to watch all the bands. I saw everything, Rolling Stones, U2, White Snake, uh, Scorpion, whatever, all the rock bands at the time, I watch it uh, live. I went to the to the stadium to see all of that. Uh, we all learned English. In school, we did a little bit of French and a little bit on English, but I really didn't apply myself and learn anything. <laughs> so when I started traveling to Peru, Bolivia, and other speaking uh, countries in Spanish, then I started picking up Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to the U.S., I realized how little English I really spoke, and I put my mind into it. And I knew then if I wanted to be here and make a difference, I need to master the language first. Do you know how many years it took? Or? To master the language? Yeah. Um, well, what I did is, I, this is what I tell people. One of the greatest things to do, you, I mean, you got to go to school. I did an intensive of four or five months in, in the English school in New York City. But I used to watch news and films two, three hours a day. Because first, if you can hear it and understand, mm -hmm. then you can speak, then you can write. So I used to put hours and hours and hours, my four or five months, uh, when I moved here to master the language. But I would say that I began to speak probably, uh, I felt comfortable with the language maybe after a year and a half, two, then I'm like, okay, I have enough vocabulary. Because it's easy to say, the book is under the table, the book is on the table, what's your name, you know? But to carry a conversation, really, uh, is, 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 a, is a different thing. Yeah. My my mom and my grandma spoke Spanish to me my entire life. I understand it pretty well. It's just I can't speak it. I I never really uh I never really got down to learning how to speak it. I uh it's mostly because when they speak it, they they will point at something or they will they will make like an indicator that that is what they're talking about, or that is something they want me to do, and then I will understand that like the second or third time they tell me to do that thing but I've never really gone around to speaking it. See, I think you're talking about an American problem. United States of America has so many good things, but this is an American problem. We don't really incentivize uh, people to speak three, four languages, two languages. It's bad. It's just like speak English, you know? You live in a global economy, and the more language you speak is good for you, for your resume. Mm -hmm. And we have this thing like if we speak English, which American English, no, no, even like the English has an accent for America, you know what I'm saying? So I speak English with an accent because I wasn't born here. It's not about my accent or not having an accent, it's about knowing how to speak the language. So in Europe, people speak three or four languages average. They are much higher bar than us here. And I think this is something I'll tell the entire you for your guys' generation. Learn as much language as you can. And part of how you're going to master the language is to travel. My parents were both educators, and they told me, it, formal education, you take it to this level. Now, now, informal education can master you to the next level, which is traveling, eating the food, communicating with the local people, going to a museum, you know, put yourself in the context of the day-to-day -day of the other culture. You master the language, and you'll learn so many things. Well, that's my advice, number one. Try to learn as many languages you can. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Mm. So um, to put the topic uh, topic of art again, you have this piece called um, The Bird of Revelations that like appears frequently. Um, what is the relation to that? Like, what is it about? The inspiration to that piece. Man, you're the man. I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bird of Revelation is probably um, my best project I ever gonna work in my life because I'm creating a project. Today I'm known Duda the Archivist. What is an archivist, right? It's a guy who has a passion for activism, to social issues and art. I did so many projects connect to that. The Bird of Revelation is my own creation 
of sort of a mascot to the Amazon in Brazil, Amazonia. Mm -hmm. And and we're about to drop my first NFT. Then the first phase of the bird revelation, which is an animation on my drawings, uh, is, is just like he's invading the top cities in a row. So he's going to invade John Square in New York. Mm -hmm. And then he drops the blue leaf and then trees start being like just coming from the ground in the middle of New York. That idea, we're going to choose probably 30 or 40, 40 different cities in a row, the most important ones. And we're going to make that available to the art collector. The interesting thing is if you buy my Bird of Revelation 3D, you receive a, um, also a... Um, a real artwork and the frame of the artwork is made out of recyclable materials from the Amazon. And you get to plant a thousand trees in the Amazon. Okay. So the idea is to connect art, technology, and a social cause. And there is a problem of deforestation and how rapidly mm -hmm. We're destroying things, and it's the burden is mine, but it's gonna be much bigger for your generation. So I'm. It's to me is the greatest project because connect all technology, all ideas, NFTs, and blockchain. It's like it's the money goes directly to the person. Doesn't it bypass political situations? Countries goes directly to the institution, and you can track online. It's 100% transparency. That's why you see the, on the NFT space projects mm -hmm. that did well and they don't do well because it's right there in your face. Now, this first NFT I'm going to drop is not a cheap one. It's probably going to cost $20,000 each one of them. But, you know, then I'm going to begin a series of other NFTs than like, smaller editions than you can buy maybe for a lot less money. But this first one is for really people who love collecting art and love to make a difference into what's going on in sustainability and nature today. And $20,000 or $25,000 is still coming up with the right number because everybody got to get paid to create this amazing yeah. NFT and distribution and all of that. Um, is a group of people involved. But um, when you do this, think about you planting a thousand trees in the Amazon and then you begin to a process once you buy then it will put you in an online process that shows the entire accountability how the seeds are growing what land they're gonna plant then everything you get access to that this is the most incredible moment in history to connect again art technology and social cause mm. I also noticed there's a there's a certain like fishbone in some of your other pieces as well. Um, I was actually wondering what that was specifically, or is that just a thing? Yeah, a lot of what I do today after 30 years, I work, uh, I work and rework my own iconographies. I have several, Bird of Revelation, the, the fishbone is another one. And, and the fishbone has to do with a series that I created called Elemental Fossils. Mm -hmm. And I begun in Brazil many years ago uh, creating sculptures out of bones, cow bones. Mm -hmm. I went, I have access to my cousin's farm and I took the bones and I started creating these sculptures. And when you deal with fine art, the whole idea is how you're creating this concept and how this concept then is based in several uh, uh, art history or whatever it is that you're pulling from. Uh, uh, philosophy, theology, how you bring in this to life and get manifested into a physical work. So the first things I did was the sculptures with cow bones and then they became drawings and prints and then I did the fish fossil. Then a lot of collectors bought that piece. And suddenly what you see a lot because once you create something, you see the collector's love and you create which we call the commission piece, right? You make an original, but they want another one. You do a variation of it and the variation of it. They all originals, but they became part of the same series, the fishbone series, mm. which it falls kind of under the category of the elemental fossil sphere uh, uh, series. That's very interesting. Well, we're also um, school that has a lot of art programs and 
We know you have a program called the Jersey City Summer Youth Mural Art Program, and this program takes place during the summertime for six weeks from ages 13 to 22. Students and young adults will take a part in making a mural piece in Jersey City. Would you, it would be nice if you could tell us a little bit about that, please. Uh, see, Soraya knows, you know, she was there with me last year, <laughs> you know, but I would like this year to extend to more. Uh, I'm here for the first time in the school and I see you guys invest in all this equipment and our program. There's beautiful art in the hallways and I, I just want to extend and I'll follow up with an email sending the details of this program. Jersey City today has um, um, a board and I'm in the board of the mural board of the city of Jersey City. We have the fastest growing city and murals in the entire state of New Jersey. We have more than now probably 215 murals. Uh, then you, we bring international, local, and national artists is a combination of it. And then we have under the umbrella, we have the Jersey City Youth Summer Mural Program. And that's an elite program. I have built that with a team team of people, um, uh, and this is um, is a wonderful experience because the students get paid. They go for the six weeks uh, training into learning how to work together, how to develop the ideas, the concepts. You know, I don't develop for you. I just mentor you with other artists and people that we bring in the program to pour ideas and possibilities. But ultimately, this group of select students between maybe 20 to 25 students making a collective and a powerful community mural. So they go into learning about each other, working in groups, and learning about the community they're going to work in together to create this mural. And they, and they make this happen. And they get paid. And the pressure is on. They need to learn how to speak. They need to learn how to present. They are on video. Uh, they, they have to bring results because that's what life is about. An artist needs to produce. Being an artist is a hard thing. It's not easy. You know, so we teach that, you know, and the kids just have, every student that comes to our program has a 200, 300 uh, 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 growth in one, in, in one summer because, uh, we is really hands on, and that becomes a critical part of the portfolio for students who wants to go to art school, visual art schools, because there is no program in the entire state of New Jersey prepared professionally that way, like the one in Jersey City. A lot of other cities sometimes reach out to me, and I tell them, "Do you guys have money for it? this? Is the this is a program that is offered by the city of Jersey City." with some grants from the city and then we have supplemented spo sponsors then comes and do the reception the opening we have an incredible opening at the white eagle hall right here jersey in downtown we play the, the 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 documentary the short documentary we celebrate the families the students the artists the community it's a full circle from a to z program and I'm very proud of it. That's part of my legacy to the next generation, to your guys' generation. Well, what I liked about it, because I did participate last summer in the youth program as the photographer, um, is that not only is it a great learning experience for the students, but it's a lot of motivation for them to want to learn because art is something that they do love. And everyone's very nice, and it's like a big family, and it's a great experience that we get to move around a lot and you stay active. And it's always like a good energy brought together and so much art and so much color and so much inspiration that you can build off of each other. So I think this program was a very nice idea. And I like it. Thank you. Hope we can have more people from this school this year, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. So from art, right, I know you have a fashion line called DPFD, Duda Penteado Fashion and Design. Fashion, is, is this something that you inherited or is this something that is learned? Um, both. I think every artist is like concerned about how they dress cool. I think artists are aware about everything around it. It's not just about the artwork I make, but it's the way I dress, the way uh, the things I'm involved. Artists is a whole package. And 
It begins in your mind and everything that you do. Uh, the fashion has to do with, I study a little bit of fashion back in Brazil and I was interested in fashion. I work also with installations and theater. I did a lot of things. Um, but um, I always like fashion. And to me, the fashion thing does two things. I, I allow people to have something of me, uh, some artistic item that we created, then it has a practical, uh, you know, utility, then you can wear it, right? Different than have an artwork then it's in a pedestal, in a wall, has a different relationship with the viewer. And and also are cheaper than my artworks. You know, my artworks, they go for a little bit of uh, thousands to all the way to, you can buy for 100,000, it depends on the project we're working. So only select people or more established people can have access to that. But the fashion are more available to people and it does something different. It created different conversation. I think ultimately we are in the point of history now in the 21st century, then um, this, all these possibilities that you can make with art with your talent, with technology and, and, and availability. You know, when you talk about fashion, fashion, traditional fashion, you needed to create a hundred pieces, 200 pieces, where we store, where you distribute. Now, right now the system I have is directly online. You like something, you pick it, you order, it gets delivered to your house, and that's technology brought to us. So I think what technology is doing today is open a lot of possibilities. And I think for you guys, then the artistic minds love this podcast and art. Just don't waste your time because when you grow in, you're born into something, sometimes you take that for granted. Mm -hmm. I mean, these tools are here. When I began my career, it was crazy. We need to take photos and a slide and put in the mail. It's <laughs> painful. I need to take photos with my friend as a photographer, put in the mail with a piece of paper with a resume, send in the mail and wait three months for a response through the mail. <laughs> That's painful. Today mm -hmm. is instant. I just don't want you guys generation to take this for granted. When you do and use those technological tools, do with meaning, right? Put something, a great idea or a great project, go from there. Not just like, oh, I drink coffee today, next day, oh, I drink this coffee. Oh, you know, I ate French fries, you know, I'm like, what are you saying? Why you use those tools to, to, to communicate a message, to say something that you love to do, you know? It's, it's free, you know, in a way. Yeah. Well, here's a little sneak peek of DPFD. Hi, my name is Rosanna Mirabal, and I am the co-founder and creative director for Duda Penteado Fashion and Design. Beauty, composition, and style are fundamental to the expression of our existence. Language alone is sometimes limited in its ability to express what one might truly feel, imagine, and see. Artists have no choice other than to express themselves through their unique artistic ability. Based on the work of visionary artist Duda Penteado, a selected team of talented individuals came together to create Duda Penteado Fashion and Design, an artistic line of wearable and collectible elements to enhance your life over the past 20 years, Duda has created performances, video installations, murals, sculptures, paintings, and other visual practices, and devoted much of his time and work to important social issues related to racial injustice, globalization, cultural identity, and other geopolitical and social phenomena of the 21st century. He's had many exhibitions at galleries, cultural institutions, and museums throughout the United States, Brazil, and Europe. Duda's work cannot be solely relegated to a movement or a particular country. It is clearly the art of a global thinker with a message. For the past few months, we have been working through an extensive curatorial process, selecting artworks and designing artistic pieces together with our team. With that said, I am so excited to announce the release of our online store. Visit us at shop.dudapenteado.com. People have already begun receiving our products. 
Our purpose is to engage and promote thought-worthy conversation and emotion through a unique artistic experience. Each item is an opportunity and a reminder to dig deeper into yourself and perhaps even shed light into areas that bring you joy, reflection, and liberation. Okay, so I'm another co-host, Lana, and I have another question for Duda. Were there any moments where you doubt yourself or you didn't really feel comfortable being yourself? As an artist? Yes. Oh, yeah, many more. <laughs> <laughs> what was well, that like? Well, the, the problem is that I think a lot of the schools, when you leave high school, you guys get into training, you guys get in, but when you go to... Uh, university level. I think universities in the United States needs to focus more into the business of art. And, you know, my generation had very little of that. So I needed to learn everything on my own. And that's kind of scary. Mm. You know, the fact that you're creating something great, it doesn't mean it's going to get to the public or in the right hands or the right people who know how to promote. And all those pieces of the puzzle needs to get connected for you to become a successful artist so yes there were many moments many moments you know i'm just a, I, lo I love to pray and i have my moments like you know like talking to god what do i do next you know but yeah. something always figure out what i have to say to you don't lose the hope if you want to do something put your time and you know be persistent things don't happen i think one of the things I find about your guys' generation, everything is a text message, but it's not everything a text message. You're not going to build a career by a text message. It's going to take hundreds of text messages, persistence, development. How do I go to the next level? Who's my next mentor? How do I develop this? Sometimes you start working an idea, then evolves to other ideas. How do I create a system? So, so it's a journey. You know, and yes, I did have, but I, I, I just stuck around it, you know, and I did it. One of the scary moments, like I guess you want to know one, was coming from Brazil to here. I decided to come. I had one friend in Brazil, a connection in New York. I had very little English at the time. I did a freelance job, few projects that I was doing with design and art. I saved $20,000 back then. This is in 1995. And I came with the money with one phone number uh, to call, and I got the, uh, in an English program. And that's how I came to America. It's like knowing no one, basically. And I had a life for 24 years in Brazil knowing a lot of people. And I put me through that situation. That was, I guess, the most... Uh, intense <laughs> adaptation in life i needed to learn make new friends learn how to communicate and learn the language because without the language how i'm gonna make new friends how i'm gonna connect with people mm -hmm. you know that that story is gonna come with more detail in in my book i'm gonna talk about that you know and sometimes we think because technology is so at hand today so easy then boom is a text message of a, a thing and we're there it's not that simple you know and you're going to have to make sacrifices. When I give lectures to a lot of uh, different audiences, I always tell people, and I'll say here today, do you, do you heard about um, Mandela? You like to be like him one day? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Do you want to stay 20 years in jail? Then uh, nobody no. raises their hand. Because the reason I use this story is because the price he paid it's like sometimes people don't think like technology is a offer is it, a great tool in our hands, but we still need to go through the human experience, right? Mm -hmm. And perseverance, uh, finding your passion, and all of that is still the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say again, you guys are at the best time in history with all this technology <laughs> available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't make your Instagram about nothing. Don't make, I don't even say Facebook because nobody yeah. uses Facebook <laughs> more, but all this other stuff that is out there about nothing, making about something that you want to say. And like five, that's your portfolio, by the way. Mm -hmm. In five years and 10 years, you're going to look back and then go, that's how I started. You know, it's amazing. 
but make meaningful things. Wake up and say, I want to do something meaningful. I matter. You know, it begins with you. It begins with your mind. And it begins with the journey that you're going to perceive. And it's going to be um, problems along the way. But that's life, you know. And you got to learn with that. And push it through it. And make better. And figure it out. Hmm. I like that answer. So I want to say this. So that video that we just saw here. You see, I'm doing now something that I love. The, the, the woman talking in that video is my daughter. And then I don't know if you saw it, someplace Soraya is there mm -hmm. with the fashion. So I'm like, it's, it's, it's all about legacy for me now and how my family is also getting involved in the things I do. You know what I'm saying? It's just not just about a thing that you buy, a jacket, a boot or whatever, but it's about connecting the family. It's about using art as that glue that connects humanity and vision and dialogue. Oh, that's very nice. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Well, we're running short on time, but thank you so much for coming to the show today, Duda. It was very nice having you here and answering all of our questions. Thank you to all of our viewers and join us next time for uh, to wait to join us next time behind the scenes.